What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Let's see if I have sound real quick. Yes, I do. I have sound. Welcome back, everybody. I appreciate you guys all swinging by. I have seen already there's messages out there. Today, we're going to talk about firmware 2.5, 1, 2, and pretty much like issues that I've seen, that I've experienced myself. And just a regular chili grill. It's nothing big today. And um, I appreciate all you guys coming by. And let's check out the chat already that started before I even started my live stream. So we have here from Edwin Bonilla. I have not updated in anticipation to such an event. With all the new DJI stuff coming out, Bartos former has in durability been tempered with. No update for me till further notice from ADHD. Um, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, 2.512, let me tell you, it is a good update so far, as long as you don't really have to temper around with the calibrations. So calibrations seems to be the major issue on this drone, because um, as I have pre predicted it before with 2.511, you're capable of actually doing the calibration on your hand when you do the IMU calibration. Apparently, there is an order that you have to do calibrations first on this. So the first one would be the compass calibration. So that should be your first calibration before coming out. So I'm just telling you guys in the order, as I experienced it after doing a total of 80 calibrations, total, like 80, including everything, like IMU, gimbal calibration, and uh, uh, compass calibration. Compass calibration seems to be the first one. So have good GPS signal, go outside somewhere and do your compass calibration. Compass calibration starts off with the compass being, you go like this, and she's gonna ask you to first hold her like this and you turn around in a circle until these lights in the back turn from yellow to green. After that one, you have to hold it upwards like this which is weird because that's the third axis that they added in 2.512 2.511 did not have that so 2.512 included this one so you're going upwards this way and spinning around in a circle again until these yellow lights turn green afterwards you turn it sideways like this and you start spinning around in a circle until these yellow lights turn green that is your compass calibration make sure you have sufficient I just leave it open. Um, sufficient GPS signal, because 
If you don't have it, the compass calibration might be affected by it. Make sure it's not in between buildings, not inside of a building. It's outside somewhere in an opener, more open field. GPS um, calibration or compass calibration is one of the most important calibrations before doing the IMU or the game of calibration. So that has been, in my experience, just like that. So that is one of the calibrations that you should do first before everything else. The reason why I predicted into being in that order is because I had a lot of horizon tilt. And that seems to be one of the biggest issues that people have is the horizon tilt. As soon as they did their calibrations and they thought they did it all right, they, their horizon was off, either to the left, either to the right. And it has to do with the combination of the GPS, the compass calibration, the IMU calibration, and then afterwards the, the gimbal calibration itself. Another thing in that whole thing, okay, let's go through this real quick. I haven't even said hello yet. You guys are all here already. God damn it. So we have Michael Inc. We have Walter Hall. I've seen JR in here. I've seen Hot Rod in here. Welcome back, everybody. Edwin Bonilla. Roger Moss has also sent something, and I can't see the Roger Moss message here, so I'll read it to you guys. Uh, Roger Moss has commented on one of my other ones where he said he's going to show up in this live stream. Because, dude, when I installed the new firmware, the second flight it, I took, all of a sudden, the drone just dropped, and I had my first crash. I'm going to contact Evo, but I really don't think they care. I think they will care. Um, I'm pretty convinced that Evo is going to, or Autel is going to take care of it. Um, as long as you have footage, as long as you have the drone, sufficient pictures, Make sure that you contact them and you supply them with everything that they're asking you for, flight logs, telemetry, uh, footage of their stuff. If you have screen recorded your stuff, I do screen record every flight. Um, and I'm using a free screen recording thing. It's called X Recorder. X Recorder can record, um, let me see, X Recorder. It's orange like this. Shit, it's too bright. You can see. Uh, it's called X Recorder on the Android. It's super easy, and the file sizes and stuff, because I have the Android, I have like 40 gigs on this phone. So I have screen recorded pretty much every flight just to make sure in case I fly somewhere and my drone drops out of the sky and it falls somewhere, I can't retrieve it, and I can't get the flight card, the SD card, to show the video. Because SD cards usually survive the crashes wherever they go, but if they're 200 feet in the water, I ain't going down there to get that. So um, I screen record most of my stuff, and it pretty much gives an indication what happened, what might have happened, what was the circumstances, and all that stuff, besides the flight logs and telemetry. And they're going to be looking into everything when you submit all that stuff in your ticket. Um, so don't be discouraged to contact them. I know they are backed up with a lot of stuff, um, and there were some issues about the cracking in the hull, uh, which does not affect the flying capabilities of this drone. And somebody posted somewhere a video. I don't know where it's at. But there was a video somewhere where they showed how to exchange the the hull itself. Um, I clocked over a thousand flights now. I have no cracks, so I'm not sure what causes it. It's not heat because I flew this drone in ludicrous mode on purpose just to see if I can cause these cracks. And I used three batteries in a row, and these motors was hot, bro. I couldn't even touch them, like it was really hot. Um, I made sure that my arms and stuff over here. Uh, the one thing that I that I am still concerned of is the is the manufacturing part of these arms with the glue. Um, if you had a crash prior and you skid forward and these arms bend inwards this way, they can cracks can show up over here. You will not see these cracks if you do not feel how the resistance is on these arms. Because the first time that my drone was really bad until they sent me this one. Um, this one arm was really loose. You could really move this arm back and forth, really like planning, because there was a separation of the glue right in this corner right here. And because of that, um, th it caused vibration, which messed up the rivet of the propeller. And then the propeller was just like, you know, once in a while when she tried to stabilize, she just literally dropped out of the sky. And I showed a video of that. It's, I think everything is in my video of Evo 2, the best drone of 2020. And I still think to this day that this is the best drone ever. Even though the DJI Mavic Mini just got dropped to the Mini 2, or it's actually called the DJI Mini 2 now. It's no, no more Mavic, I think. I'm not sure. And I, I believe that this is still the best drone in its price class and in its capabilities as the 6K or the Pro version. In my eyes, it's still one of the best 
drones to take beautiful footage, pictures, and 3D modeling. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm super convinced I have clocked over a thousand flights with this bad boy with almost a thousand miles of flight. So it's not like that I just take off land, take off land. No, it's not like that. I'm flying this bad boy. And hey, this is a great drone. Anyways, but if you do have crashes and stuff, your, your pre-flight inspections should involve these arms. And that involves also the rear arms. So if I see a lot of guys that say, oh, it, it just dropped out of the sky, but I had a crash before and there was nothing visual. There was nothing visual wrong with my stuff either. When I looked at it like this and I, I kept looking at her, so there was nothing wrong with it until she went up in the air and I heard this weird sound that sounded like hornet's nest. And you have to be aware of those things. You have to constantly check it. Even after I flew it for three times really hard um, on ludicrous mode and I kept going back and forth 40 miles an hour, 42 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, 39 miles an hour against the wind, 38 miles an hour. Bring it back. These arms was hot, man. These freaking motors was hot. And I brought it back and I, I looked at it. I took out the battery. I, I set it on the table and I just waited. About an hour later, I checked my entire drone and I looked if there's any cracks on the sides over here. There's nothing. So I'm not sure if it's the first generation. I don't know how many ger generations came out of this. But having this bad boy right here and I have not had any of those issues. Okay. So let's get back to... The chat real quick, see what's going on over here. We have Hot Rod talked already to somebody. Was a battery firmware? Okay. JR said, I, uh, let me scroll up. JR said, I updated my Evo. I haven't fly, I haven't fly any distance. I keep it very close to me just in case. And so far is good. But I, I read many issues with this updates. Um, there is not really that many issues. It's just, I think it's because of the, when people update, I think they neglect the fact that in the update, it states that you have to redo the calibrations. Guys, please do the recalibrations on these things. Don't be lazy. Um, I think that's what happens. I think that's what happens a lot. Um, people are just, ah, man, I just did an IMU. Ah, I just did from 2.511 to 2.512, there's a new access to the compass calibration already. So there is a reason why they're leaving that in the patch notes. If it wouldn't be required, I don't, I don't think they would include that in the patch notes. There's a reason for it. Uh, the new patch notes, the two things that they said that they fixed from 1.1 to 1.2 was that they fixed the horizon um, tilt, which apparently didn't happen. But I think it has to do with the calibrations, guys. So after a compass calibration, we kind of swerving off. After the compass calibration successful and we have done it, I went over and I went actually in this shop. This table is as level as you can get it. I mean, there's, there's, I don't have my level here, but I have like a super long level. I made sure the level is okay. And this table is level this way and it's level that way. It's, it's level all the way around. After that, I used the IMU ca calibration, starting off with this. I put a rag underneath, I turned her over, and I tried to keep her as level as possible. And then I just leave her like this, and then I put her on the side, and I put her on the other side, and then I put her up and downwards until the, the calibration is successful. Once she's successful, I restart the bird. After I restart the bird, I go ahead and I do the gimbal calibration. After that gimbal calibration is done, I go outside, I fly her up, and I look straight for see if there's any horizon stuff. The reason why I did 80 calibrations total of everything, I wanted to sh to see, uh, not show, I wanted to see if there's any differences. And the differences showed that if the compass calibration was done after the first two calibrations, the IMU and the, and the gimbal calibration, and I did the compass after, my horizon was off every single freaking time. As soon as I started with compass calibration first, then did one IMU, and then did the gimbal calibration, I had no problems with the horizon. I even tried to do a compass calibration, then do a gimbal calibration, and then do the IMU, the horizon was still off. So it has to do something in that order. So I wish that author would have told us in what order they preferred, because technically seen, they're supposed to be the ones who are doing all the testing. Um, well, I'm doing a lot of testing. So. I doing it for you guys and of course for me but i want to share my experiences with you so i did a total of 80 calibration guys on this whole thing and let's return back to the chat real quick 
really two that I know of. Gimbal roll in hyperlapse and flicker when shooting at the sun in auto mode. Yes, the shooting in auto mode is not the only one. So apparently it has to do with the white balance. Um, I tried it out because somebody posted in there, oh, was your white balance fixed? My white balance is fixed, I guess it's set instead of auto. And my white balance is usually set to daytime like 5400, 56, 54, 5600 Kelvin. And um, I had a lot of flickering in there as soon as it comes darker, because apparently the camera has issues of adjusting of what is dark, what is black, what is blue, what is gray, what is orange, what is purple, and it flickers in between that. It does that even in video mode, in regular video mode, and I think it has to do with the white balance, because as soon as I've set the white balance into auto, but left everything else in, 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 in whatever, in ma manual, the flickers went away. So that's another thing. So if your white balance is set to a certain part, like 54, 58, 48, whatever that you have it set to, try set it into auto, even though you have everything else, the manual exposure and everything, and try to see if it changes, because mine's on has changed, the flickers went away, it didn't do the flickers. Uh, it changed colors, but it was gradually changing colors. So it, it's different because it, it identifies a different white balance every single time, I guess, uh, depending on if you're looking into shadow, if you're looking into a light source or whatever. We have Tony Wise. I have updated my Evo 2 firmware, but have not flown it yet. I will try tomorrow. All right, you do that, my man. And then we have Michael Inc. What's up, Michael? And we have Walter Hall. Hello from LA. Aloha, back to LA, my friend. And then we have Michael. I just flew my bird today in Connecticut at Foxwoods Casino. Flies great. Yes, mine flies great too, unless I do a hyperlapse. But even that is pretty good now, ever since I did the calibrations. So the calibrations, she still does it. And that has to do with the low light mode. So as soon as it comes darker, where the sensors are affected by it, where, it, you know, when it comes up with the message and it tells you, oh, um, it's low light and the sensors might not, uh, uh, obstacle avoidance sensors, whatever, might not pick it up good. That's when you have gimbal roll. Every picture that she like takes, she like even herself out every single time. That's what I've seen so far. So I'll tell if you're listening to this, if you if you're watching right now, guys, it has to do with the low light stuff. So definitely, because I tried it many, 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 many time lapses, <laughs> many time lapses, very many or hyper lapses, whatever. Then we have Anthony Sanders. What's up, 808? What's up, Anthony? How you do, my my man? And then we have Alex. Aloha, bra from a lazy sunny morning down under. Oh, down under. Aloha, back to Australia, my man. And then we have Jake's Drone Life, my brother. What's up? I'm here tonight. Yay! What's up, my Jake? Jake is getting slowly into FPV. He did like one of those Cine moves and stuff. No, not Cine moves, but one of those tiny FPVs things. It looks pretty nuts. I'm 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 pretty impressed. I'm very impressed. What else? No, the Mavic Air 2 is the best. <laughs> well, in its price class, I I don't I don't fight it. No, I wouldn't fight it. Um I, I still think Mavic DJI has done something with that Mavic Air. Uh, I have to give it to them. That's it's it's pretty neat. Greetings from Belize, bro. Robert Hernandez, aloha back to you, my man. And we have Hot Rod Daytona. Mine flies well. Yes, his flies well. And he says the gimbal roll in hyperlapse on the six K is known to auto. Hey, there you got it. And that's why I'm telling you, freaking Hot Rod is the bangers. He he always does good things. He always texts with them. I don't know why they don't put him on the payroll. Walter Hall, thanks for all you do for us. Hey, you, you're very welcome. You guys are all very welcome. I'm almost halfway there with all the monetization with the ads and the contributions that you guys did in my chat with like the super chat stickers. I'm like a little bit over halfway there to pick up a DJI Mini 2, but I'm not sure if I want to pick up a DJI Mini 2. <laughs> I'm actually um, tempted to do a poll and, oh, yeah, after. Um, to do a poll on what you guys like me do so that I'm gonna be investing the money that I make with this YouTube videos and stuff and the money you guys donate in the chat that you guys sort of like can vote on what you guys like me do next and maybe even give me ideas. I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of ideas. If I would have my ways with these drones, if Otto would send me two of these drones just for play around with, brah. <laughs> JR, sorry, what's the correct way to do it? Sorry. Well, it's, it's my experience. It's 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 just my experience. So the, the calibration has to be compass first. I'm you, 
and then the game of calibration. And IMU and gimbal has to be on a super level surface. And the IMU, you still can't do them in your hand. There was no difference if I had it in my hand or if I did it on the table. So there, it's just in that order for some reason. It seemed to, it seemed to make a difference. So it's that's just my experience. Okay, so I'm not really trying to tell you guys, hey, this is how you have to do it, and there's no other way. I'm just simply telling you, after 80 calibrations, that it seems to be the most sufficient and efficient and sh and and shortest and quickest way um, to do it. Um, I'm getting lost. You guys are writing too fast. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'm just going to skim through real quick. Thanks for all you do. Sorry. What's the correct way? Uh, I normally run 5600. See, yeah, he runs 5600 as well. Might be right on. What? Might be run right on white balance. I had it in auto after the update for a bit. Yes. Uh, Hot Rod, try. I know you, you fly it just as much as I. I think you cracked almost a thousand flights too, as many times as I see you flying stuff. So. Uh, try check it out. I mean, for me, the white balance thing kind of fixed it, fixed it, fixed it ish, because it still changes colors, but it's not flickering. Like it's not like jumping all over. It just changes colors. You know how it is when you look into a light source and you don't. And what is this? Who did this? Where where did it go? JR, I appreciate you. I really appreciate you. Keep up the good work. Always a good time to be on the stream. Thank you very much. I don't miss this. I don't want to miss this stream at all. That's why if I can't do it on a Saturday, I try to do it on a Friday or on a Sunday. So it's going to be around the weekend because I love these live streams. I love talking to you guys, and it's really great. So what else do we have here? I'm. We have Tony. Tony said 808 unrelated. Unrelated question is always good. How often? Why? Do you replace your props? Uh, only if they have nicks. Like, I haven't touched anything for the past 500 flights, bro, if you believe it or not. Um, I don't change out my my props at all. And as you can see, they're still, oh, you guys can't see it. Hang on. Let me move this out of the way. Gerard, thank you very much for your $5 donation. I really appreciate it. They are still pretty stiff. You see that? They're, they're very stiff. I have not changed these out. These guys have like 500 flights already. So um, there is barely. This one is coming kind of loose, but... Apparently that seems to be a normal thing, but these 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 propellers had 500 flights. I know like 500 flights and they're they're in a very good shape. I know clip things, I know ding things. I leave that up to my mini and I had to fix them. <laughs> so um, I plan very carefully ahead with this drone because it's a lot of money and it was hard, very hard work, and I don't want to jeopardize that at all. And um, I only had to change it once. Uh, ever since I got it, so um, I'm at 200 flights, 250 flights, and think 300 might be a good spot. Like I said, I did 500. <laughs> Thanks, bro. It's tough to fly FPV. It's challenging. Yeah, I believe that. I I believe it. Um, Mumbai someday, maybe someday I'm gonna try it. I just think it's a very cost intensive um. Call that cost intensive hobby. Besides these, these actually can make you money. FPV can only make you money if you're like a pro. Like you have to fly this thing. Like you gotta be like an original double. You gotta be like a Mr. Steel or or all these guys, Ken Heron, all these guys, these these pros that that fly really, really, really good. You know what I mean? So then we have Ken Steel. Hello, what's up, my man? And uh, let's keep going. <laughs> I can fly anywhere I want with the Air 2, and I don't have any geofencing problems at all. Mavic 2 Pro, different story. Um, okay, that sounds actually very promising. I don't know if the software is different or what. I thought the DJI Fly app is all the same pretty much for all the... I have issues where I can fly this bad boy without the geofencing, and I have issues with my DJI Mini. Um, the Mavic Mini does not want to take off on certain spots because it just simply tells me that it's a no-fly zone or it's a, it's a restricted flight zone, and I can't take off. I just can't. So I'm kind of scared of even picking up a Mini 2. And I'm not quite sure why I should pick up one because I barely touched this guy. Like, uh, I did maybe 50 flights with this guy just to substitute and plus to get my best shots of, of October. That video is almost done too. Um, but I barely fly it because it's just it's it's a small toy to me. And I use it for, like, really tight shots where I don't want to jeopardize the safety of this drone. So I'm using the DJI Mavic Mini. 
Um, just to substitute for it, I film in 2.6 or 2.7K, upscale it to 4K, just for that quick shot. And usually people don't, are not able to tell the difference. So, um, get a life deck. Mm. Yeah, well, okay. If I get a life deck, though, it's like, all it does, it's like, I don't know. We'll see. It's tempting, but it's it's $500, bro. It's like $450, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I got, a, I got my Mavic Air 2 flight more combo five months ago, and I have not changed the props yet. Yeah. So DJI, I mean, all the drones, it's pretty much the same. Like, as long as you don't bend these, uh, when you store them well, and you don't touch nothing, you don't clip no branches or or bushes or whatever whatever it is, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, like I said, the biggest issue that I think that these this drone has, as of as of the beginning of this, is these arms right here. These arms that glue in between. To this day, I don't understand why they never make a solid arm. You know, so let's say you make a solid arm instead of having it separated like this. You make a solid piece that goes all the way here and mount the motor onto that uh, with this extension, whatever it is. And then you fiddle the wire through and have it come through at the end. You know, you can do that because you can leave an opening in the back. And then I don't know how this is inched in here uh, in this in this joint. But I think it would be better if this is one solid piece instead of two pieces glued together. Um, I think that's the biggest design flaw that this drone has. Besides that, she's like a tank in the air. She's really strong. Um, and yeah, man. So we have Eric here, Eric F the spotlight mode on that Mavic air two is just unreal. Been flying since flaming. There's a lot of DJI stuff. I'm on auto freaking stream guys. <laughs> Been flying since flame wheels. Never seen anything close. Blows Mavic two tracking away. FY Costco has an air two bundle now still returning it. Oh, Costco seems to work. A lot with DJI, you know? Is that what it is? Mike O'Connor, got new gimbal cover yet? Um, no, it's on the way. Um, I ordered it. I, it didn't come yet. But what comes in... Oh, I almost forgot. What comes in on Monday or Tuesday, finally, is the Skyread um, ND filter pack for $60 on Amazon um, that I bought for this. And I'm going to put it up against the ND filters of the free will ND filters I got from Origin Dobo. Um, because I'm only using the... the the top row, which is the regular ND filters, just like the Skyread are regulars, and I barely use the CPLs. I actually gave away the bottom ones, the CPL filters, to somebody that owns Auto Evil 2. His name is Carl Boudreau in Canada. Uh, I seen his post sometime on, on Facebook, and he didn't even know that there's ND filters for it. And I told him, if you want the CPL filters, you can have them. So I sent them to him. Uh, they came back because my wife put the wrong address, I guess, and it was not enough postage, and it came back, so I had to resend it out, but I gave those away, so original, though, if you see this, um, your gift of ND filters actually pleased two people, okay, so um, that's pretty great, um, I just wanted to share the wealth, since I got them for free, I send the other half to the CPF filters to Canada, and I get the Skyread filters coming in, and if I really like the Skyread filters, I'm going to choose randomly probably who I'm going to give the ND filters from Free Will to that I can give those out to somebody who needs them because I don't need that many ND filters. You know what I mean? So um, just as a, as a thank you to you guys, I'm going to choose somebody randomly sometime down the road and I just say, hey, you don't have ND filters, you can't afford them yet, I'll send you these ones, okay? So let's see. Uh, what else do we have here? Copy Jim. Jim, what's up, my man? I think you might have more problems with aftermarket props, but it it will depend on the quality. DJI and Autel have to be more careful. Better quality to start with. What? Worth? Worth? Better quality to start with. No. Well, um, I understand the quality part. So I actually only go with the original Autel stuff. It's the same with the batteries. Like, I'm, I've am seen those knockoff batteries that came out. They're like 80 bucks or 90 bucks. No. Nah. Mm -mm. I rather drop the 200 bucks and I think one of the batteries I have to do pretty soon she got a total of 67 cycles and I'm not sure if that's the limit or whatever but she cannot hold the charge all the way she only holds the charge 75 percent um she charges forever and she sometimes holds me up on my block over here so I charge the other three first but I have them all marked um so therefore 
yeah, so it's I'm on 67 cycles on that battery right now, and she's giving me a hassle. So, but she doesn't do the immediate drop. You know, you guys remember when had Paradon Afi had that immediate drop, like when the cycle had like 40 or 50 cycles on the battery, then all of a sudden from like 25 percent she went or 30 percent she went down to 8 percent, and you was like 200 feet away, like. <gasps> And yeah, so you had to bring it back. So these batteries apparently don't really do that yet, or at least not in my case uh, on that first battery. Um, so it's just 67 cycles and 75% is pretty much what she gets up to, but then one light no even come on anymore. So when I check in the app it's, as well, it only shows three quarter up and she was on this charge all night. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, I might have to call Altel and ask them how that works. If it might be still under warranty. I don't know what the warranty is on these things. I don't like bother these guys, you know, so I know they're busy anyways. Uh, I fly my auto more than my Mavic 2 Pro. I fly my auto all the time, guys. That's the only thing that I really fly, even though I have a DJ Mavic Mini. I fly this bad boy once in a while just for the hell of it because the camera still films, but the gimbal doesn't work. And just for the shits and giggles of hope, for just for the heck of it, I just do it. So, but I can't stand out there, gimbal gores. Gimbal gores? What is that? Gores or covers? Are you writing with your phone? Is that like an autocorrect thing? <laughs> gimbal guard. Oh, gimbal. Yeah, the gimbal guard is terrible. The gimbal cover is horrible. I can't wait to get my new one. Any news on the new props other than what we all heard about two weeks ago? No, not really. I've seen somebody who bought them already. So uh, I haven't seen a price for it. I haven't. Does anybody know a price? If you know a price, please post it in here, please. Uh, what else? I invested into the searchlight from Fly, Fly, oh Fly High USA, two one thousand milli, oh lumens, one thousand one thousand lumens. What are you trying to do? Blind an elephant? Hopefully it doesn't make the motors to work too hard. I don't think so because the searchlights itself, like when you get the harness, even the what is that Firefox lights, the harness goes around. This drone can handle a lot of weight. I mean, look at my, where is it? All the time. Oh, up there. The 360, the Insta 360 One R. Uh, when I mount that bad boy on the top over here, even though it's extended, the only time she really has a hassle with it is if I have that long extension rod and the camera is up here. Um, that's when she was like going because that's a lot of leverage. But if you put it really close, and that camera weighs, I think 360 grams or 400 grams, something like that. It's really heavy with the gimbal cover, with the gimbal. I mean, with the with the cover, the lens cover, and with the with the cage and stuff, it's 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 a heavy camera. Um, I don't know how heavy GoPros are because I, I don't have one, but um, this drone can handle that. So I don't I don't know how heavy a searchlight is, but man, thousand lumens that that's 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 crazy. Paul, you miss I get a uh, land approval at my house and a Mission Bay, San Diego, but cannot fly with DJI. So I'm glad to have the Evo Two Pro and love the HDR video. A HDR for some people that's all it takes you know what I mean like um like I said I think the word cinematic shots is overrated totally overrated and I think that just getting beautiful shots uh I mean you guys seen the intro hey how you guys like my new intro I worked on that all week last week so um yeah so it's it's like if you want to have some really nice shots it pretty much has to do with how you fly it and how you do your gimbal shot like your gimbal orientation and stuff and sometimes with the light being behind you on the side of you not straight ahead of you so it cannot reflect off the surface hey you get even with hdr you get some beautiful footage man it's it's really really nice i should be on the warranty for that battery yeah I'm, I'm gonna check that out eric um i definitely i definitely oh i think it's six months oh okay six months july august september october oh june june to july August, September, October, November. Ah, we're close, bro. By December 11th, I'm going to be six months with this drone. Because I got it. I paid for it June 11th, I think. And I got it like a week later. Droneworks was really quick shipping it. Like, even with that huge case that they sent me, that GPS, GPC case, it, it was it was huge, man. It uses the Fox Fear harness and uh, CNC, the light connections. Okay, so CNC, that's usually aluminum. So that should be still pretty pretty light you know what i mean yeah it's gonna uh, eric it's gonna be a close one it's gonna be a tight one but um hey if i have to drop 200 bucks i gotta drop 200 bucks i mean i've been flying it like crazy and um yeah so calibration wise firm wise i've seen firmware wise that um people had issues where it dropped out of the sky 
where it had a lot of horizon tilt and oh, what was the third one there was a third one that was going on there was something else oh, man i can't remember i'm trying to think of it right now i'm sorry ah there was a third major issue with this was it the landing part somebody had issues landing and it. it was not only him had multiple other people but besides i think category wise the horizon tilt is one of the worst and that has to do with your calibrations so do the if you come late to this or if you came late to the stream so to tell you guys again the easiest way to do the calibration is first the gps compass calibration outside somewhere open away from cars away from buildings away from anything magnetic or metal um and do your gps um compass calibration which starts off turning in a circle like this turning in a circle like that and turning in a circle like this all the way around until these tail lights over here they turn yellow for each calibration and when you're turning they turn green if you did it right okay after that one you do your imu calibration which you can do on a level surface or you use your hands on that level surface and hold the drone up in the air um which starts first like this upside down side to side upwards and downwards when you're done with that now you set it down like this and you do your gimbal calibration those ones are the three steps that i think is the best way to get rid of that whole horizon thing if you have horizon tilt after calibration one of your calibrations went wrong and it might have been either the gps calibration or the imu calibration which both have to be apparently pretty close between 95 percent to 100 percent successful uh to be like really level until you can do your gimbal calibration it's that simple so my mouth is dry <laughs> mnt john solutions what up my man hey what up finding me the life chat yes you did oh i like that look at that look at that picture right here oh it's still playing all the mouse you guys can't even see it um i'm pointing out his profile picture i really like that <laughs> there's also a guy his name is mike pierce on facebook he created a landing pad for the Hotel Evo, oh, for his Hotel Evo too. And it, it, it impressed me so much that I actually made a landing pad, um, that I created a landing pad out of, out of uh, really light tin wood, um, which has hinges on it that you can fold it up into four pieces. So it fits actually into the slot of the iPad slot in my GPC case. I was looking for a printer, locally a printer who can print the design so I can glue it on top and then cut it on those spots where I can fold it because I have a really nice design that I made for it. And there's nobody printing right now because <laughs> the printing company that was supposed to print it, they ended up having COVID. So they're closed down. Alex, warranty, Altel Robotics, the company warrants to the original retailer purchase purchase of this product that results in the product failure within one year of purchase of the new product. Does it include the battery, bro? Uh, this warranty does not apply to battery that cycle charge more than 200 times, 100 times for refurbished batteries. Okay, so I'm way below that. I'm like 67 and I'm half a year in. So I might get lucky, guys. This update has mine fly much better. For some people, it has worked out, but for a lot of people, it hasn't. So if you might be one of the one people, uh, one of the people that did the calibration really good. Um, apparently a lot of people, like I said, some people are also lazy. And I suggest to you, just because you did the update um, 2.510 or 2.511, so it went from 2.50 to 2.511. So they never do their calibrations. So sometimes they're just like, oh, I did my calibration. Then 2.512 came out and they're like, oh, I just did my calibration. I don't need to know. You need to do your calibrations, guys. I'm honest. You should do it, really, because they added new access to the to the to the compass. So you have to. Okay. So you should be golden, brah, for warranty on batteries. Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. And then I'm at 12. Yes. So am I. I'm at 1.5. No, 2.512. So we'll see what else comes out for it. I mean. What they need to work on is that hyperlapse where the flickering part and then the gimbal horizon can be fixed with that calibration thing. You really, really, really have to be on that. Um, what else? And then, the, oh, the other one was the sensors. I guess the 
bottom sensors, there's an option in there when you go into general flight uh, flight controls where you can turn off your obstacle avoidance, okay? In the bottom, it says the radar. Then you go on to advanced, and it says something something like downward positioning sensors. If you turn those off too as well and you try to land on certain surfaces, she, she still... She goes down to the ground until she touches the ground, but then the motor starts pulling up really hard because she the sensor did not register that the drone is actually touching the ground already. Um, and I think it has to do with that option of the downward positioning sensor. The way you can get rid of that is if you just take off, take back off, go up again, and try go back down again. Um, she did that a couple times to me because I turned off downward positioning sensors based on low light conditions because I try to see if I turn that off uh, and the obstacle avoidance if my hyperlapse still has that gimbal tin and it still does it. So the sensors seem to be not fully disengaged at all times, even though you turn them off. So I don't know why that is and I hope they fix it. Um, another thing that I noticed is that the sensors are not as hypersensitive to light anymore. Before when you used to fly this drone and I used to fly it and I was over the ocean and it, it was a blue It was beautiful. It was a freaking blue sky The Sun was beaming, but it was like around one o'clock So it just passed the noon rise and like the Sun is beaming down from the top These sensors were impacted by it and I got a message where it says there's an obstacle above you And I look over it's like there's nothing but blue sky bro Where's the freaking obstacle and I thought it was a bird or something But I couldn't see nothing and then I realized after as soon as I turned her that the Sun was affecting these these sensors even when i was flying underneath the bridge there were pillars that was like maybe six or seven feet away on each side she started slowing down even though my my stick was fully pushed forward going five miles an hour in, in precision mode and she slows down and as soon as she passes the freaking pillar she yeah she pack, picks back up speed back up to like five miles per hour which was kind of a hassle in 2.511 they changed that so it's not as sensitive anymore. And then 2.512, they increased it again. So now I'm getting some of those messages back where the light um, affects that. But they've, they've seemed to have done better now with the downward positioning sensor and water. Like before I had waves and I was kind of close to water. Sometimes she used to go into landing mode while I was pushing downwards to go closer to the water. She, she started landing. I'm like, oh, and I, I pushed back the stick back up and I'm like, you're like 20 feet above water. So they fixed that with 2.512. But 2.511, I liked it when the sensors weren't as sensitive as they are now. So I hope Otto listens to this and or hears me. And what would did you use to make your landing pad? I don't think I spelled language. <laughs> it's all right. My landing pad is made out of super thin uh, quarter inch plyboard and I just shaved it off. I glazed it. Um, I put varnish on it and then I drilled small holes in it with um, with hinges. I don't have it here right now. Um, I would like to show you guys, but um, it's, 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 it's foldable into four different spots. And when you unfold it, that's when I want to have the design on top. So that's why I that's why I varnished it so that I can glue stuff on top. So I just need a printer who's going to be able to print it out for me. And it actually is big enough for the drone. It's like maybe like this, this wide apart with the four things. But it's just big enough that it fits into the slot of the GPC case for the second level in the bottom. Where usually an iPad goes. I don't have the money to afford an iPad. Sorry, guys. So I figured I'll put a landing pad. Uh, what else? They are a must. Oh. Uh, I'm lost. I don't know what's a must. By the way, 4K24 on ISO 6400 works great for night flights. Yeah, it does. But 4K30 works pretty good too, so you don't have that stuttering if you drive fly past one thing. But I mean, 24 or 30, we can. I mean, people fight about it all the time. I film. I started filming in 30, and I started rendering in 30, and I, I think the video is way more smooth. Even though I tried before, I tried to do 24 and then render in 24, and also have my timeline on 24. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't like the footage at first, but now that I switched to thirty, I'm actually. I'm. I'm very happy about it. Thirty FPS. Calibration that is. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that that is a must. Definitely, the calibration is a must. Like a cat in a bottle. <laughs> like a cat in a bottle. Yes. Rob Sheldon, tip. You can. You can adjust the horizon in flight. Yes, you can. There's a. There's an option for that. But if you do it right the first time. You don't have to worry about the horizon no more. You know what I mean? If the calibrations run good, really good, and they and you fly up, the calibration should be 
almost to, like I said, 95% to 100% successful on the Compass and the IMU. And then the gimbal calibration on the level sur surface, and it should be fine. There shouldn't be anything. I had to adjust it before multiple times by like 2.5 or uh, no, 2.8 just to get the horizon the right way. And it, it takes time away from your flight time. You know what I mean? And then sometimes when you turn and you come back the other way, she's still tilted and she's still tilted to the other side now. Now you have to play around with it again. So there is an issue with that. You know, so if you have it done the right way, right off the bat, you should be good. What else do we have here? Dash 8 drone. What broadband setting do you recommend? 5, 10, or 20? For me, 10 works great. Um, I have no problem with 10. It, it works great on my part. I have, I don't think I have ever used 20, you know. But I have, I don't have urban areas, you know. I don't. I don't really have urban areas. My urban areas are all like one-story houses. I don't have skyscrapers, no nothing. It's a Hawaiian thing, you know. They cannot build any houses bigger than the tallest palm tree on the island or something like that. Very cool, brother. I hope you give dimensions on your pad. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely will. Um, I wanted to make a video about it too, how you make one your own landing pad and stuff and what it takes, you know. So how do I say the DaVinci cleanup for noise works great? Yes, that does too. So uh, in post, you can work a lot of things out and a lot of kinks can work out. Um, it works really great. And so far, I have had no issues whatsoever after doing successful calibrations and having my ISO set the right way, having everything on manual. And the more you do it, like, you know already where your options are at and you know already, oh, okay, so I did it the last week. I did it this way a couple of days later. Um, I want to do it this way, and you're going to get more and more used to it that you want to do certain things in a in a certain matter. So uh, for a couple of you guys, there is a giveaway coming up pretty soon about the lift door mount, the very first generation, though. It's not a brand new one. It was sent to me by Poach on the Loose, and then there's also a giveaway for this, Skyfire Aerial. Uh, I still try to get the engineer to come and be on my live stream. So he's busy every weekend. So I'm trying to get him one of these days into my live stream. And he sent us one of these, um, or he sent me one of these so I can give that away too. So I'm, I worked hard for almost two and a half weeks on a video for you guys. I hope you guys like it, um, but that will be a giveaway. And then I think tomorrow the giveaway is gonna go live for the power supply right here. So if you guys build rigs, streaming rigs or whatever, it's a 650 watt, uh, 80 plus bronze, power supply unit um, where I made a quick video of. So if you guys are interested in that, that will be dropping tomorrow. And um, what else do we have here? MNT drone solution. I use 10 and have gone over three miles without any frame drop. See? So 10 seems to be like the thing to go with because I think that's a standard too. So I, I prefer 10. I have no problems with, with 10. Jeremy Clark just wrote something, but it shows up late in my stuff. Okay, here we go. Jeremy Clark said, you are supposed to do compass calibration after you travel a distance of 40 or more miles. Should you do an IMU calibration as well, since you need to do it after compass? You don't have to. Um, the compass calibration is based on your GPS location so that your drone knows where you're at. Um, that's pretty much the reason why if you travel further than then 40 miles, whatever, it's because GPS, because of magnetic fields of the earth and all that stuff. They just want to make sure that your location is correct. I don't know why, because you don't, you don't compass calibrate your phone, you know, and you have your location thing on. But I think it has to do with the drone and the positioning, whatever. But I have not done any IMU or gimbal calibration after I did travel. And when I travel across the island, I have to go to the other side of the island. That is about 70 miles, and it's like literally over a freaking 10,000 foot mountain. And uh, I do compass calibration over there just, just for the heck of it. But I don't do IMU or gimbal calibration and it works out great for me. Uh, Horizon stays the same, it's it's really good. So we have Babayo, hey, what's up my man? How you doing? And then we have Mix, phone is not flying. Phone is not flying. I'm lost. <laughs> MT, I do accomplish every flight just in case. I mean, we got two point. Yeah. Yeah. He has a point there, guys. You have a two thousand dollar drone that you have in the air, and um, you don't want to mess that up. You know what I mean? It's it's a lot of money. So don't be lazy, don't do shortcuts. That's pretty much what it is. It's the same like when you work on a car, you don't want to jimmy rig anything because you want to make sure that it's the right thing. Uh 
if you do make shortcuts, you might pay a bit of price for it. And that price, uh, I can't even fathom what it is, what it means to if that drone goes down, because I almost do to my pants the time she almost went into the water, you know, and that was the time when I had when I had my issues with this drone. And like I said, don't be lazy. Don't be, ah, oh, I just did a compass calibration. It doesn't take that long, guys. It only takes like 10, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, maybe a minute. But that minute is going to save you a whole lot of headache and it's going to save you a whole lot of disappointment. Um, you don't want none of that. So remember what you said about the phone not needing calibration. Yeah. So, okay. So phone is not flying. Oh, because it just has GPS. I mean, it just has satellite connection. Is that what it is? I don't know. Phone is not flying. Yeah. Oh, because the phone. Yeah, because this drone flies. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Now I got it. Takes a little bit longer sometimes, you know. Like, I'm sorry about that. I'm just like I said, I'm not a genius, you know. Um, but other than that, man, I appreciate all of you guys. Uh, that was that was awesome. This was a great live stream. I totally love it. If you guys haven't seen it in the community tab already, I have decided against a membership. Um, I wanted to. I was I was asked by a couple guys. They they emailed me. Oh, are you gonna do a membership and stuff? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna do a membership. I don't like do memberships because membership, I feel like a sellout. Because I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this for fun. I'm doing this because of the, because of the experiences that I have. I don't want, I don't want to. I, I put myself into your guys' shoes because I work just as hard for my money and for my drone as you did. And some people, it's easier for them to buy a two thousand dollar drone. And some people like me, they invested. They sold how many things they did, how many stuff, and they worked really hard to afford this thing. So, in my eyes, it's better if you have somebody who can talk about his own experience and can suggest to you what you should be doing, than have no info on it at all. And I just keep following up. Like I've seen a lot of YouTube channels, they have disregarded already the Autel Evil Two, and I think because it just got out like six months ago, there's still a lot of people who who will buy this bird, you know, and. The two, the the Evo Two Six K Pro, uh, Evo Two Pro Six K in my eyes is still the best version. It's still the best thing to go with, and I think that's the version that you should be going with. I mean, even the guys with AK, I've seen some guys with AK footage. Man, that, that stuff looks great. You know, it's all about posts. It's all about how you do stuff. But I decided against the membership simply because. I don't have nothing else. I'm not like the other guys that has, I don't have a training course. I don't have anything that I can teach you besides what I do already. You know what I mean? So I just don't think it's right to do it. So I rather have it that people can do donations here. I have my coffee site set up where somebody donated $15 the other day for five coffees for me. I appreciate that very much. I have uh, my Amazon affiliate program and a lot of people seem to be going through my videos and buy this stuff. I make like $30 a month. But it's $30 that I didn't have, you know, and I reinvest that into the Skyread filters, into filters, into into products of my channel, which includes mainly the auto stuff or maybe some someday I'm going to be able to pick up a Mavic Air, you know, but I don't want to do this whole, oh, I'm doing this because of the money, you know, um, it's the money going to grow anyways, because the views are going to grow. The followership is going to grow. I'm going to have more people in my chat. I'm finding it harder to, sometimes to keep up on this chat. Uh, and we only have like, what means only, we have like, what, 50 people once in a while in here and crank it up. So it's it's like, you know, I, I, I rather do it this way where everybody benefits from it and just take whatever people feel like it's good to give. You know, I don't think that a membership would be, I don't know, it makes a wrong impression in my eyes, you know. So what else do we have here? I would have a permanent stain in mind if that was me or <laughs> yes definitely man i thought that thing is going somewhere you know like i was like i'm gonna be if that thing ends up in the water i was thinking already the moment it was going sideways all the stuff that was going through my head i'm gonna get a divorce i'm gonna get kicked out of the house i'm gonna i'm gonna be broke <laughs> i'm not gonna have nothing to make a video with uh yeah i was i was devastated uh about compass calibration, is there any difference to doing it standing still, holding it in front of you versus holding it out at arm's length while you spin around? There's no difference as long as you spin. Um, I I don't I don't necessarily hold it that far out. I just 
I just go like this, like in a comfortable stance, and then I just turn around. As long as I guess it's the same distance at all calibrations and all angles, I haven't seen no difference in it. So, and then uh, what else do we have here? MNT said, "I am very grateful for your channel. We got ours about the same time." Yes, um, thank you. I appreciate that. Love your ethos. What is that ethos? What goes around comes around. What is what is my ethos? Did you spell it wrong? And I mean, hard By the way, thanks for watching my videos. Hey, I love your videos. Your videos is great, man. I I, I try to watch a lot of people videos. Um, I am a lot of times I'm on YouTube. I'm just cruising. I'm just checking it out, and I try to see if there's anything. Sometimes you guys give me even ideas of like, I look at a shot. It's like, oh, that's nice. I'm gonna try that shot next time. Um, so I'm learning from you guys too. So MNT said, your juju. Oh, my juju. My juju, yeah, it's it's not good to have bad juju. Bad juju is bad, man. That stuff is like, mm, you don't want nothing of that. <laughs> so yeah, it's been almost an hour. We have yeah, we have four more minutes until the hour. So I think I pestered you guys enough, and I'm very very grateful for all of you guys. If you guys haven't done so yet, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget. And um, what else? Give this video a like if you want to. Um, what else? <laughs> um, I think that's it pretty much. I announced what is coming up in the future and we did the compass calibration. We did the issues that we had with 2.512. And yes, I love watching ideas of you guys coming out, making videos. Um, you guys, if you guys have videos and you guys want to send them to me, send them to me. You know, um, you guys can find me. Let me see if I can find it here right here i'm gonna do a screen share real quick so you guys can see it where did it go uh share there there's the screen share so we do share this screen right here so that is my screen share right over here so you gotta be able to see see my mouse right here there's my instagram i'm not that much on instagram guys i'm not a big instagram fan um even though i have it on my phone but i rather watch youtube videos and there's a Facebook link right there to my Facebook page. Um, and you can contact me over there if you want to send me messages, if you want to ask things, if you have problems whatsoever. Don't feel um, scared of asking. Um, I'm just a dude, you know, who does his thing. So, yeah, that's pretty much where you can find it. It's right here on the top right corner of my banner on my channel. And then, um, yeah, pretty much that's what it is. So... Thank you, everybody, for coming by. I deeply appreciate you guys. I deeply appreciate you guys all coming by. I mean, don't forget, COVID-19 is still out there. We have a new president, so we'll see what he does about it. <laughs> I hope it works out great. And um, don't forget, be a nice human, wash your hands, and wear your mask. Love you all, everybody. Aloha.